I am going to wield this sword and shove it right up your ass! What is happening, fellow collectors, fellow subscribers, fellow hunters? Mike the Hunter here. Damn, Mike, where the hell you been, brother? It's been about, what, a month since you last uploaded? Um, I have been doing dad shit, taking care of the old kids, taking care of the lady. But, uh, you know, on the side, I still have been, um, you know, paying attention to the hobby as much as I can when I have that free time. I've been dedicating that free time to reorganizing my collection and making sure that I'm fully satisfied with the way my figs are set up with the cleanliness of the shelves and just overall not having to worry about my collection uh, uh, not looking like shit. So as you guys saw in my last video, I went ahead and started making a lot of changes with the cube organizer back here. I got myself some acrylic risers off of Amazon that have saved me a great deal of space a great deal of organization and overall just making my figs look badass. Being a collector, you just you learn better ways to display your action figures throughout the years. You see from others, you learn from others, you get inspiration and you make your your own collection pop um, by putting in the work and and you know, just making a slight investment. Sure, people have, you know, their glass detolfs and whatnot and those those are like the top of the line. Like if you put some, you put anything behind glass, it's going to make the value and the color of that figure and just the overall appreciation for that figure pop out so much more when it's behind glass underneath a nice bright light. It just makes it stand out more and it makes you want it much more. Etoffs are a great investment, but they are also on the expensive side, especially nowadays. I guess Ikea bumped their prices from 60 to 100 for their glass detolfs, which is sad. It, it really is. It's sad. But uh, still, 100 bucks. I mean, these detolfs, they go a long way. I have one myself so far, um, and I hope to get more, you know, when I have a larger room to display my more prized, expensive possessions, such as, you know, my replica masks, my movie prop, you know, things like that. But uh, for now, I'm staying on the cheap side, and I'm investing in these acrylic risers for my action figures. As you can see, my figures are looking beautiful. They are all getting a chance to be shown. No figures are hiding. Now, there's still a lot of cubes that I still have to go through, but that being said, I'm going to have a nice little collection tour in this video, show you guys what's up with the Mike the Hunter collection. And also, I'm going to be adding a couple more figures to the shelf that I've been waiting to unbox with you guys. I don't like opening my Marvel Legends by myself for some reason. Like, I, I gotta show it. I gotta share that moment with other people. So I got about three figures that I want to add to the shelf up there that I'll, I'll show you guys. Uh, for you other collectors out there who, you know, like to get ideas for your collections, I hope you take something from this video and, and maybe you want to up your collection a little bit and do something yours, tweak it a little bit. Um, uh, hopefully I can inspire you from this video. It's all fun and games buying them, finding them in the stores, actually hunting them down. But the real fun you get out of action figures is displaying them. That is the uh, cherry on top, is uh, displaying the figures. I don't know what that was. It was uh, supposed to be Italian. It's all about posing your figures in the most dynamic pose you can think of. It's all about putting them on a nice balance next to your other favorite characters under a bright light and showing them off. Being able to walk into your room every single day and look over and say, ah, I did that, found that, I posed it, and it's just there like a work of art. I get to look at it. That's what that's what my figures are to me. They're a work of art. And with art, you got to have patience. You got to have balance because we all know them figs be dropping left and right if you're not posing the ankles at the, just the right amount of pivot. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and show you the collection of where it's at right now. And from there... We will go ahead and unbox the rest of the guys that I'm going to add to the collection. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to show you this sweet setup with the good guy doll. This is one of my favorite, uh, one of my most expensive uh, things in my collection. And I like to take good care of it. Uh, so I, I brought out Chucky uh, to sit in the corner of my legends here. Got a nice little Halloween 1978 poster that I had to frame. Top favorite horror film of all time, no matter what. 
And guys, I'm just gonna run through the cubes first so I can save the legends best for last. So I'll show you what I got going on here. Uh, first cube, I have a little bit of Robocop action next to uh, this badass Punisher on his motorcycle. Gotta have this displayed like this, man. Love that Punisher. I remember I found that in a Target. Got a sweet Spider-Man here. I got gifted by a fellow collector. Thank you so much. A uh, little Optimus Prime back there. I gotta find a, a spot for him. Next square down, we have some Star Wars action. Uh, Darth Vader next to a few troopers here. Down below, I have Invincible. Uh, Mark from Invincible. I, I, I love this show so much. I, I just started it. Um, I just... I just started watching it like a month ago. I know this show's been out for like two years, I think. Um, but right when I saw the first episode, my eyes were caught. I enjoyed it. And of course, as a collector, you think whatever show you like or, or character, superhero, you got to get a figure of him. So I ordered these bad boys off of Amazon for 25 bucks, And I decided to keep them in the box for now because they just look so much better in the box. And plus, I heard these guys are not so much posable anyway, so I don't want to be disappointed with the uh, the articulation. So I'll just keep them in the box. Down below, I just got some stuff here. Um, some Marvel Legends that I found over the past couple months. Um, that I haven't found the time to open yet or find a spot for them. I have some Funko Pops back here. Some of the uh, the good <laughs> the good ones that I kept throughout the years. I don't collect Funko Pops that much. I don't collect Pops that much anymore because you know I, I got to pick my poison. I got to just stick with the legends. And uh, you know if I were to collect Pops, I would not have the space. Got the Watcher here, which I'm debating on opening him or not. I really think he would make a sweet centerpiece of my legends because you know he's the watcher he watches overall um, but uh, i just love him inside the box because i've been wanting him for so long for so many years the fact that i found him in the wild i just wanted to keep him in the box but man wouldn't that just look so sweet moving up from omni man we have mario this sweet mario i got it uh, back in 2020 um, i love it to show my appreciation for Nintendo, my love for my Nintendo Switch, I gotta have a giant Mario. Um, I've even seen this giant Yoshi that they came out with. I ran into it at a Target and that looks nice, but they need to make a Luigi before they make a Yoshi. If they get a Luigi, I'll get that next to Mario. Nice little Pac-Man light. Very cool. And of course, Conker from Conker's Bad Fur Day, one of my top favorite Nintendo 64 games of all time. Um, I was lucky to find this figure for like maybe, I think it was like 15 bucks someone was selling it for on OfferUp. Uh, but you try to go online and buy this guy, he's like, fuck, 30, 40 bucks, I think. Um, maybe more, I'm not sure. But yeah, I had to get Conker from Conker's Bedford. Moving over here, we have Batman and the Joker. Um, this was also a gift that was sent years, years ago uh, in the early Mike the Hunter days. Uh, a good buddy had sent that out, so I've kept it safe ever since. And of course, I'm going to put it on display there. Looks beautiful. Moving down below, some more unboxed Marvel Legends uh, and G.I. Joes. This was an extra uh, gold Destro, G Destro, that uh, I decided to just keep in the box, keep it in package. Uh, Snake Eyes and Timber. I want to open that up too. Uh, Got to find a spot for it though. Captain America, got to keep that safe. That's that's uh, the 40 year anniversary one, I believe. And I uh, wanted to keep that one safe in box. I already have him unboxed anyways. Baron Zemo, yeah, fresh in package. Moon Knight, fresh in package. And then X-Men, and then Wolverine and Hulk, which I almost thought of unboxing that Hulk. But then I ended up finding the... Um, the Toy Biz reissued one, so I have to put that back in storage. I'll show you which of those uh, we're going to be unboxing today, too. It's going to be a few of those. Moving upward, we have the Horror Collection. We got some Mezcos and some NECA figures. We got Freddy Krueger and Chucky. Michael Myers right in the center because he's my top favorite. Jason Voorhees, Mezco. Very sweet. Got... Mr. Leatherface back there. Love that Leatherface. Ghostface from NECA, one of their newest Ghostface they came out with, and then Pennywise. Moving over, we have a Deadpool head. Love this Deadpool head. Let's see, uh, it's a bust bank. Got some Godzilla figures here. I've had that Godzilla since 2014. 
It's a bust bank as well. Got it from a comic shop. And you got to have Godzilla 2000. My favorite Godzilla of all time. Super dope. Found that one at Frank and Sons for I think like 10 bucks. Moving down below, we have Major Chip Hazard. This was one of my favorite movies when I was younger, man. Fortunately, the button doesn't work, though. Um, yeah, Major Chip Hazard, bro. We will destroy all Gorgonites. All right. Moving upwards, we have Scorpion versus Raiden from the Storm Shadow Collect. Storm Shadow, you dumb shit. We have Scorpion versus Raiden from Storm Collectibles. Very expensive figures. I believe these were about 80 to 90 bucks each. I wish they were a little bit cheaper than that, but hey, for good, solid figures with solid material, you gotta pay some extra moolah. Love those guys, man. They deserve their own shelf. All right, guys, moving into the G.I. Joes. Yes, they have their own cube, which I went ahead and organized them with the acrylic riser. So you got beautiful spirit here, got Duke, snake eyes. Why did I throw Captain America in there? I just needed a spot to throw him and that was an empty space. So ah, I thought he would look pretty cool with the GI Joes. Got a random dog here. Um, I wanted to customize it so it's kind of like a, a GI Joe dog. Maybe put like a military vest on him, make him look pretty cool. But I haven't gotten down to finding a vest for him but he scales perfectly with the Joes. Moving up, we have an Action Force figure by Valiverse, uh, Delta Trooper, that was a gift. Uh, shout out to Danny Martinez for sending that out. Very cool, love that guy. Got uh, Scarlet, um, shit, I forgot her name. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw some blanks on these names, guys, because I can't keep up with all the Joe names. Um, got Flint. Got uh, Beachhead, love Beachhead. Got these hefty guys back here, the larger scale G.I. Joes, Roadblock. Where am I gonna put the rest of the Joes that come out? I don't know, we'll find out, but uh, that's all I can fit for now. Moving over to Team Cobra. We got Storm Shadow. Oh, such a beautiful figure, dude, I love that head sculpt. Got his swords, his katanas. We got Cobra Commander himself, looking very good, very demanding. We got Destro with the suitcase, gold guns along with Baroness, looking sexy. Going up, we got Croc Master. A couple of ninjas, red ninjas here. We got Firefly, Major Blood, another red ninja, and of course we have the troopers up here. Still got one more space right there for uh, Zartan, still haven't gotten me a Zartan to this day. Uh, I'm, I'm wanting to find him loose for like maybe maybe 15 bucks I'll pay for a Zartan. Haven't found him for less than that, but yeah. And if they come out with an even cooler one, I'll buy that one instead, but yeah. Zartan, I need you there. So those are the cubes, the inside of the cubes that I have. Now we're gonna get to the real good stuff, which is uh, Marvel Legends, guys. You know I'm most famous for collecting Marvel Legends throughout the years. So in this collection I have here are we're going Avengers, street level heroes, and villains, my top villains. I still have to make an X-Men cube. I haven't brought out my X-Men figures yet. So I gotta buy a couple more cube organizers, uh, acrylic risers, and pull out my X-Men collection. But for now, this is what we have, so let's get into it. Okay, starting from the villain side on the right, we have MODOK. Modok was too big to fit on one of the stands, so he's on his own little corner, looking very good. Next to him we got Pyro. We got Psycho Man up there, which I recently purchased for about seven bucks. We got Mojo, looking very large and in charge up there. Marvel's leader next to Red Hulk. Sugar Man. I didn't have a spot to put this Deadpool, so I stuck him there for now, but uh, you know, I'll put him somewhere else soon. Still a couple slots left on this villain shelf uh, for, for villains that I have to pull out. Very last we have a Bullseye there. Moving over to the next tier, we have some major villains here. We got Marvel's King, Red Skull, Doctor Doom, 
right in the center. Gotta love Doctor Doom. He's my top favorite Marvel villain of all time. Moving over, we have Taskmaster looking really good. Um, this one, I'm drawing a blank on. Uh, shit, Armin Zola, right? Yeah, Armin Zola we have right here. Man, I really need a Baron Strucker to go right next to Red Skull, but waiting for him to come out. Udysseus Claw, looking very nice. Uh, Batrock the, the Leaper, right? Uh, Crossbones, really a lot of Hydra characters here, guys. And then we got some major ones on the top. We have Loki, Ultron, and Thanos. Very, very cool. That is the villain shelf. Now, moving over to the hero side. First, we have Stan Lee, which is the man that started it all. Got Iron Man's gauntlet. And here we go. We're going to have, we're going to start from the bottom here. Captain America, right next to the Punisher. Love that Punisher, man. I customized that Punisher a little bit. Changed some parts, but yeah, that is the best Punisher head I've ever seen for Marvel Legends. Uh, why did they discontinue that one? I don't know, but I'd really love that one. Okay, moving over, we have Spider-Man. I believe that's Pizza Spidey. Waiting on the new Pinstripe Black Panther to come in from Amazon, and that's going to replace that one. Not a fan of the purple and all that. It's just, I don't know, it just looks all painted on. There's no sculpt. I want a better Black Panther up there. Moving up next, we have Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes next to Falcon. Got the butt buddies there. Wolverine, ready to slice and dice, and he's happy about it. Doctor Strange, doing his work, his mystic magic. Got Black Widow, shooting her gauntlets, next to Hawkeye. They need to come out with the new Hawkeye, guys. A really badass purple Hawkeye for the comic book Avengers. But for now, that one will do. We got Iron Man posing next to War Machine. Look at that badass, dude. Oh, man. Yes. I could just hear some Black Sabbath playing right now as I look at that figure. Very proud to have that one. Moving up, we have Hulk standing next to Thor. Not a fan of that Thor. That Thor head sucks. I know I've been told I need to switch the head out. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I gotta wait until I find an actual Thor head to replace that one. But uh, the body of it is very cool. I like the body of that Thor. All right, we got Giant Man, uh, the Wasp, and Ant Man. Looking good. Got the three right there. Moving over, we're going to more of the street level heroes. It's gonna be a little bit more of a mix, but yeah. Got more street level heroes over here. Punisher from Mezco, I had to pose that one up there. Got um, X-Force Wolverine, looking really good. Spider-Man from the Vulture 2-pack. Deadpool, look at that, yeah, he's got the rubber chicken. Looking good, that is Deadpool all the way, baby. We got Blade, not a fan of that Blade, I gotta tell you guys. The ab crunch on him sucks. You cannot pose that figure in, in a good way. So I hope they give us a new blade further down the line, but this one will do for now. I was very happy to collect that back in 2017, I think they came out with, so. Yes, love that blade, glad I have him. She-Hulk, not proud of that She-Hulk head, but the body is uh, pretty good, I love the colors. Iron Fist and Luke Cage. Moving up, we have Captain Marvel. Uh, Nick Fury, Vision, Speedball, I love that Speedball, Frogman, going up, we have the Major, Fantastic Four, we got the Thing, Human Torch, Invisible Woman, um, Mr. Fantastic, and Namor at the top. I do prefer this suit this Namor body over the Speedo Namor. Um, I just love the colors of this. I love the aqua blue with the black and the gold. And this was, this was way back in 2016, man, when this guy was in every Walgreens. And I was, I was glad to find him, but eventually I hated him because he was in every Walgreens. But uh, still, it's one of the most beautiful legends I have, and I'm proud to have him. 
So there you guys have it, man. It's my Marvel Legends collection. The, the, you know, the top of the top, my favorite figures standing high on the acrylic risers. So um, guys, let me know. Give me a rating in the comments section. Let me know what you think about the risers and, and how they display the figures. Like the reason why they're so nice is because every figure gets a chance to be seen. None are hidden. None are crammed, you know. Every character is visible. So, like I said, I still want to get an X-Men shelf. Maybe I'll put it right here, move these guys down. Um, still got to, um, there are more Joes to come. So I'm going to need another shelf for the G.I. Joes. Um... And yeah, that's pretty much what I'm sticking with for now, okay? Some people may say, some people may ask, hey, what about DC figures? What about Star Wars? Um, like I said, man, as a collector, you gotta pick your poison, especially when you have a lack of space. You can't go collecting every single figure line out there. So Black Series, I had to sacrifice long ago and stick with Legends. Um, especially when the G.I. Joe started coming out. That was a new line that I was interested in. So uh, G.I. Joe's and Legends are my top two six-inch figure figure lines that I like to collect. DC figures, I've taken a far step back from DC. The only DC figures you'll ever see me collecting are like, you know, Batman, a couple good villains like Black Adam. If there's a really dope Flash figure, I'll get it or a Joker figure, but besides that, DC, I'm not too big of uh, into collecting. I love their movies, I love every Batman movie there is that comes out, but figures, I gotta chill on. Black Series, Star Wars, um, the figures that they mainly come out with now are just a lot of the new movies, the new series, which I, I don't care too much to collect. As long as I have the OG Star Wars figures from the old days, I'm talking Vader, Yoda, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, R2-D2, C-3PO, the old original figures. Funko Pops, fuck no, don't even get me started on Funko Pops. You go, dude, people have rooms dedicated to Funko Pops, just walls. And I'm like, what are you gonna do with all those? What are you gonna do? I don't need that. I will get the top of the top Funko Pops for my favorite characters, and that is it. Yeah, well, I mean, just basically whatever you guys don't see here, I just don't have the space for, okay? So, moving from the cube organizer wall, I have my Detolf. So starting from the bottom, I have a Halloween knife there with the Halloween 2 Michael Myers. Moving up, I have the Jason Voorhees mask from NECA, as well as a NECA figure. Really love that one. That was a gift from my brother Joel Garcia. Shout out to him. Moving up, we have Michael Myers from Halloween's 19... Moving up, we have the 1978 Michael Myers mask that was custom work done by an artist named Niles Rieker. Very, very skilled artist. He made that mold himself. Very proud to own it and wear it every Halloween. Get a nice 1978 uh, Michael Myers portrait right there. And then lastly, moving up from there, we have the actual Michael Myers figure from Trick or Treat Studios. This one ran me about 120 something dollars, which was a very good price for a figure like this. 1978 Myers in a 1-6 scale. Love it. Got the box it came in back there. Got Sam from Trick or Treat. A nice Michael Myers portrait right there from Halloween. Very beautiful. And then we have this little guy right here. Trick or Treat Studios, Halloween 2, Michael Myers. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. How, how could I forget about these two? I got my speaker up here, my Beats Pill. A nice little astronaut for when I'm feeling spacey, you know? You know, play those spacey tunes. Like my little astronaut right there to be sitting in front of the speaker. We have Godzilla. Looking really cool. Love that. And Master Chief. You're probably thinking, Mike the Hunter, where did you get that sword from? That's not an actual Halo sword. Dude, that is a bottle opener. 
and I thought it looked exactly like the swords that they use, so I, I just put it in his hand. We have the OG Mike the Hunter uh, official art that was made from uh, that brown kid on Instagram. That's his username, I believe. But yeah, that man made my very first art portrait of Mike the Hunter, and I've kept it ever since as my YouTube icon uh, default photo and then my Instagram default photo. So shout out to that man for making that. We have a you know, little Stay Wild poster here. I might take that down soon. Got the beautiful moon right here and some Kid Cudi album art. Um, thinking about adding some stuff there, but maybe not. I don't want to get too crazy with the clutterness. So there you have it, folks. This is what we're working with for now until I move out of this place, get my own place, get my own apartment, have a nice dedicated room, hopefully with more space to bring out some more stuff. But uh, this is where we're at right now. I'm just so proud of the way this came out. And look, it's like if I want to reach that light back there, I just reach underneath the steps. Look, if I want to turn this on too. Got some rainbow lights coming up on the Street Fighters here. Sweet, man. Hope you guys enjoyed that Mike the Hunter collection tour. I know you guys have been dying for one for quite some time. Um, some of you may say that the collection has gone far down uh, compared to what it used to be, and you are absolutely right. Um, throughout the years, half of it got stolen from a storage unit a while back. The other half I have put away in a new storage that is more secured uh, with security and, and alarms and locks and everything. Um, but it just comes down to space, folks. Like if I was a, a rich guy that had a major dedicated room to put everything in, you would see all the stuff that I'm interested in. But this right here doesn't do it justice enough. I, I love everything out there. When I go to toy aisles, I just think to myself, damn, I wish I can have that line. I wish I can collect that line. But when it comes down to it, like I'm just fully satisfied with my legends and I'm satisfied with the Joes. Okay. I just keep it nice, keep it simple. And further down the line, if I want to get into something new, I'll do that. But I've been collecting legends since 2013. I've been collecting Marvel legends um, when I started out with Marvel Universe figures, uh, the three and three quarter inch ones, uh, before that. So, um, the Legends, there's still like two totes worth of Marvel Legends that I own, such as X-Men figures, the MCU figures. I have so many MCU figures that, uh, to be honest with you, I don't care to display all of my MCU figures. I do definitely care to display my comic book Marvel Legends because those are the sweet ones guys I think a lot of you can agree um, if you're a very very big fan of the MCU films then yes of course collect those you know and that's what I was doing when every movie came out there came the figures for that movie so you had to get them but now I look back and I'm like you know, did I really need all those Thor Ragnarok figures? Did I really need all those Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 figures? Like, there's some movie figures that I was like, I didn't really need them. Especially because they came out with even better versions of them a couple years later. So anyways, enough about talking about the collection. Let's go ahead and add to it. Like I said I was going to do earlier, I'm going to show you the figures that I'm going to unbox to add to the shelf. For the street level Fighters, I'm sure you guys were thinking, where's Moon Knight? Well, I have Moon Knight right here. Okay, this is the Walgreens exclusive Moon Knight that came a couple years back that I swore to myself I wasn't going to open. So the more I make displays like this that just bring the figures to life, the less I give a shit about keeping the figures in their boxes. Okay, because for one, I'm not into like the whole like you. If I keep it in his box, it's gonna be more value, and I can sell it when I'm older. I don't give a shit about that. If you're lucky enough to find two figures in your whatever your Walmart, your Walgreens, your Target, and you can buy one mint in package, and you can buy one to open up, kudos to you. But me, uh, no, not happening. Okay. The only reason I'd keep something in its box is if like I just I don't have any space to display it at all. But I got the space to display this Moon Knight, and I'm going to open this shit, okay? He just looks so cool. 
He looks beautiful. He looks very he looks very shiny. Oh man, and he smells brand new still. <sighs> I mean, it would be nice to at least keep some uh, Marvel Legends in package, like especially from this time, because you can look back and be like, oh yeah, those were those were the times where they didn't give us some bullshit cardboard wrapping where we couldn't see the figures that we're buying in the first place. There's Moon Knight next to Daredevil and Iron Fist. Looking good. And I know, I know, Mike, that figure is so much more capable of so many more dynamic poses. I know he's he could do so much more, especially with the butterfly joints he has, but I have no space and I'm not about to have him doing his own thing because once I start doing that, then I'm gonna start putting other figures outside of the risers and I don't want to do that. I wanna keep it organized. So I think he fits perfect next to Daredevil. He stands out, he really does. He stands out right in the middle, that bright white light of a figure. Now, over to the villain side. I'm sure you noticed a very important villain that I mention often is one of my top favorites. Probably thinking, where's Baron Zemo, Mike? He's right here. And I'm going to unbox him today. This son of a bitch I found at Frankenson's for $50. $50. Why? Because I didn't pre-order him when I should have. Why? Because I wanted to be noble and go out and hunt him down at a Walgreens, which never happened, folks. So I got a $50 Baron Zemo in the box from Frankenstein's like a jackass. They came out with this beauty, this beauty of a six inch figure with the just the right colors, just the right design of what Baron Zemo is supposed to be, um, as opposed to the one they came out with back in 2014. This is the real deal, and I want this one to stand next to the Red Skull on my villain shelf. So with that being said, folks, let's finally crack this open. This will be the first time I have one of these Baron Zemos in my hand. And this guy. Oh, man. You smell like success, buddy. Oh, wow. Definitely going to need the sword. Captain's America. Oh, he's so sick. I love the head movement on him. Like... I don't know if you guys can see. Look at that. Yo, he is such a beautiful figure. This is... This feels really good, man. Having one of my top favorite Marvel villains next to Doctor Doom uh, right here in my hand as I've been waiting to unbox him. Pause. <laughs> oh, yes! He looks so good! Oh, wow. Hold on a second, guys. Let me get the lighting right here. Oh, my gosh. He is truly the figure that has been missing to just finish this last line right here, dude. He looks so good with that pose. I am going to wield this sword and shove it right up your ass. Right next to Dr. Doom. Right next to Red Skull. I always imagine these two looking very good next to each other. Who are we missing, folks? Baron Bonstrucker. He's next. So there you guys have it. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, please uh, be sure to drop a comment below and let me know what you think of the display. And if you're new to this channel, you just discovered this video, let me tell you something. You're in the right place. If you love collecting in general, you just love the, the, the thrill of the hunt, really, and paying attention to the small things when it comes to collecting um, and, and how major they are to your happiness as, you know, this hobby is one of the coolest hobbies you can be in. It makes us nerds happy, and um, I, I dive deep into that and explore those those areas that a lot of people don't really think about sometimes. Um, so with that being said, folks, um, I hope you enjoy your figures. I hope you enjoy your families. And as always, good hunting to you, especially in these dark days where everyone's turning to online shopping. 
getting real sick of walking into those Walmarts and Targets and seeing the same bullshit over and over again. Your G.I. Joe sections suck ass. Enough with the Scarlets, enough with the Snake Eyes movie figures. They're dead. Move on and clearance them for $9.98. Hell, maybe even cheaper. Clearance them for $4.99. Who gives a shit? Just get them out and get the new in. Keep us collectors happy. And not only us collectors, but the kids out there that are also into, you know, getting into the game. Get your shit up, okay? Because we all miss it, all right? We all miss going to the stores, finding that sweet fig, taking it up to the checkout, seeing the judgmental face of the cashier saying, is that for you or is that for your kid? It's for me, bitch. I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one. Happy holidays. And once again, good hunting. Peace!